With the solar panels mounted, it's time to build an enclosure for the batteries and electronics and wire everything up. Before I start today's video, let me extend an invitation to you. Most of you that are watching this video series are already subscribed to my channel, and I really appreciate that. But if you want to take your support to the next level and help other people on their self-reliance journey at the same time, or you just want to hang out with me and ask questions or get advice, please join my Discord channel and help me grow it. Now on to the video. While I was building the rack, I was trying to visualize in my head how to keep the electronics and batteries safe from the relentless Texas sun and the rains that'll resume again in the fall, hopefully. So while my brain was chewing on those challenges, I decided to go ahead and get the combiner box mounted in place. Now, this is an agenda-free channel now, so I'm not gonna spend a lot of time singing the praises of companies or products, but I will show you what I'm using, and if people have questions or wanna buy the same products, I'll throw some links in the video description. Anyways, I tossed around some ideas for an enclosure. The first one that came to mind was to use one of these job site boxes. They're weatherproof and extremely durable, but they're quite expensive for the larger sized ones. A cheaper option is a resin deck box like this one, but after looking at them at the store, I quickly realized they'd never be able to hold the weight of a large lithium battery. So, as it seems like I always do, I decided to build something myself using some wood and scraps that I already had laying around. Okay guys, I have gotten started on the next phase of this solar ground mount project. I have installed the combiner box there on the side of, of the rack. So all of the strings will combine into that device and then there will be a single cable that goes into this monstrosity. This is not anything pretty to look at. This is purely made from scrap. Every bit of this I already had in my storage. All I needed to do was buy a little bit more of this wooden siding that can resist the rain and the sun to uh, enclose the sides. But anyway, what this is gonna be, this is going to be where the, the batteries are gonna be there on the, on the bottom. Uh, the uh, inverter and charge controller will be here on this bigger, thicker board which is reinforced on the back here. And, and then this little project board, this kind of flimsy, that's just gonna hold um, breakers and um, switches and the little, um, what do you call it, the remotes and the, the, the monitor, monitoring devices for, the, for everything. So, uh, as you can see, I already used this in my shed, so I already had the cutouts for some of it on there. Um, I just needed to trim off some of the sides so it would fit perfectly. But anyway, um, <clears throat> this is just cheap and dirty, just like everything else. Uh, just needs to get me through a couple years uh, at the most until I get my permanent ground mount setup created. I'm going to put siding on all the sides to protect it, but I wanted to make it so that I could just remove the siding pretty easily and be able to easily access, uh, access the components from any side really, the front, the sides, or the, uh, the back. And the back um, will be cool because I can hide all the wires or some of the wires behind here because there's going to be obviously a three and a half inch gap. Uh, between the siding on the back and the panels so so anyway it should be nice I'll, I'll try to do a good job with the wiring and make it tidy and and easy to to diagnose and troubleshoot and trace and all that stuff but the uh, the actual enclosure itself is is not going to be pretty it's just going to be totally utilitarian Unfortunately, there was no way to get the four sides that I needed out of two 4x8 sheets of siding, and I didn't want to buy any more sheets than that. So the front and back will be all one piece, but the left and right sides will consist of two pieces. Also, it was impossible to cut the pieces out and keep them all the same orientation. So the sides will have the lines horizontal, and the front and back will be vertical. Again, looks are secondary here, but I'm sure a few of you will notice it. You may also notice that I leveled out a spot in the dirt 
and then put six thick concrete blocks down to keep the wooden frame from being in direct contact with the ground. I'll worry about the rest of the siding later because I may have to remove it anyway during the installation of the components. As you can see, the first component that I installed was the inverter charger. This thing is an absolute monster, so that's why I mounted the 2x4s on the back side of the plywood so that I could use lag bolts to hold up the massive weight. And the battery Evo Hawk battery is even heavier than that, so the white plywood on the bottom of the enclosure is 3 quarters inch thick and reinforced with 2x4s. I also mounted the charge controller on the left so that I could drill some holes and run a set of cables to the combiner box. I'll probably wrap them in some sort of loom or tubing to protect them a little bit, but for now, they're just going to dangle across between the two. Then I started working on the wiring from the panels to the combiner box. Each pair of panels was already wired in series, so I just needed to run a positive and negative cable from each string, attach them to the 2x4 braces under the array, and connect them to the MC4 connectors on the bottom of the combiner box. My video on crimping MC4 connectors gets a lot of negative comments because I showed how to do this with pliers, but rest assured I always use MC4 crimpers and have done this hundreds and hundreds of times. Okay, so we're midway through the wiring job here. Uh, I'm mostly fig finished with this uh, as far as wiring up the panels. Um, this isn't the best cable management job ever, but I think it's, it's decent. It's not a mess, but it's not, uh, you know, OCD perfection. So anyway, we've, as we talked about in the previous video, we've got these two uh, wired in series, and then, and then they come all the way, their own set of cables all the way into the combiner box. So we've got them kind of carried with these, these little cable tie things, <clears throat> whatever they're want, you call them. Um, each set goes all the way down to the end. I try to keep it away from any pinch points with the, this thing um, and give it a little bit of slack so as I move the array up and down it can, it can flex. But um, then it comes down and connects into the bottom of the combiner box at the MC4 connectors there. So each, each one of those sets of panels does that and uh, have some of them running on the other side of this 2x4, some of them running on this side. Uh, I probably could have collected them all into one big bundle and used a wire loom or any number of different things, but this is what I had available for free. Already had it in my possession, in my inventory, so uh, again, I this moving out here and getting all this started has has tapped all of my funds, so I'm, I'm using every available resource, and this is just what I had. So, that's what we look like to this point. I still have to put on a couple MC4 connectors and connect those, but everything else is done. And then from the combiner box, here's the output. So there's some cable glands there, and then these bigger uh, four gauge wires come out and in and then connect to the charge controller there. I'm sorry, my camera's not focusing very well. Uh, and I've got a breaker there for 100 amps. This, is, this has its own breaker at 125 amps, but um, my, my array won't ever produce 100 amps anyway. So, uh, And then we've got, I've started on the wiring for the battery and some stuff like that, and uh, the inverter charger will be the last piece. I've got the control box mounted up there and all the wires are kind of hidden behind there. I added this 2x4 on the bottom to mount the bus bars and 300 amp breakers for the battery so that I could minimize the length of the big fat welding cables I'm using. At some point I'll get some better bus bars but these car audio distribution blocks will work just fine for now. And with the majority of the wiring done except for the inverter, and my time on my property drawing to a close for the week since I needed to go back to town for my custody time with my kids, I turned my attention to a roof for this enclosure. I was going to just put a flat piece of siding on top, but this thing was already hideous, so I wanted to at least put a decent looking roof structure on there. Also, having a 45 degree south facing side to this roof design gives me some interesting possibilities that I'll get to in a minute. Unfortunately, I didn't have any plywood that would fit the two roof faces, 
so I ended up using some 2x4s, which actually ended up being a good thing because it lifted the eaves over the sides of the front and back pieces of siding. I don't know if I'm explaining that very well because I'm not a roofer, but it'll allow the front door to open and close without the door hitting the roof, while still providing some overhang for water to drip away from the sides. Okay, I have done more than enough talking already, but I just wanted to do a final walkthrough. I am going to stop this video right here at this point, even though I technically have not done a systems check on everything to check all the wiring. But it is all done. Uh, you can see there's nothing hanging down. Everything's tidied up. You know, again, I'm not the best cable management guy ever, but that's a pretty good job for me anyways, and nothing's gonna get pinched. Nothing is uh, hanging down and gonna get hurt. This is the only part where um, there's kind of a trip hazard, and uh, I will put some like cinder blocks and stuff there to kind of keep that protected eventually. But <clears throat> um, I built this, uh, I built a little roof for it. Um, uh, yes, there are gaps here. I'm going to put some felt paper over it and then some sort of uh, I have some ideas on some sort of roofing material for the top But it is uh, I did finish the bottoms here. Uh, I did attach the back part uh, This is the front door that I have yet to put hinges and stuff on but you can see it's coming together This will be finished uh, by the next video for sure uh, All of the wiring is is done except for I have to connect this big boy to the output of the battery Evo uh, Hawk, 24 volt Hawk that I have here. The um, uh, reason why I decided I want to stop it here is because I don't have any Romex to go ahead and wire up the AC output of the inverter and I don't want to get everything wired up and, and everything and then have to disconnect it to work on it and pull this battery out because when you put the battery in and everything there's no room to get in there and access this panel and get in there and, and operate so that is pretty much it for this video um the next video will be the going live and uh and checking out the actual production of the thing uh, if you're wondering about this top part there's lots of real estate for uh, various things i want to experiment with in the future with uh, systems monitoring and uh, maybe a 5G cradle point or something like that so I can keep a tabs on this when I'm not at the property Things like that. I don't know for sure what I'm going to do with all of that But I've got plenty of real estate available to to add stuff onto this system. I also um, Face this south for a reason because I can put a solar panel on this side um, Just so that I could like put a, a light in here so that if I had to access this at night and figure out why a system tripped or whatever, I could just flip on a light. Anyway, just a little cool little 12 volt system I can throw on there because I've got some extra panels laying around still that are too small for this production system, but still usable. All right, guys. Well, that's, go, that's it for this video. I will catch you next time. Thanks for watching. As always, thanks for watching this video. Please consider joining my Discord channel if you haven't already.